Good morning, everyone. In this episode of Calimera USA, we're calling attention to the deadly effects of prostate cancer that poses a serious threat to millions of men around the world. Today, world-renowned prostate surgeon and urologist Dr. David Samadi will offer his expertise on the subject and how to detect the deadly disease before it's too late. A leader and pioneer in robotic surgery, Dr. Samadi advocates for preventive prostate cancer measures in its initial stages. Good morning, doctor, and thank you so much for being on New Greek Television. Good morning, and thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here, Yana. You have a wonderful resume, which, of which we're not going to go into because everyone does know you're a correspondent for many major networks, and you've saved millions of lives. I'm going to say millions because of your information on television. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I hope through this segment we can even help more men. And I also want you to know that when, even though we're talking about men's health and prostate cancer, indirectly affects the wives and the partners and the family. So I, I think this is a great and important segment, and I commend you for bringing this to the surface. Well, thank you, and we commend you. And what people really want to know is when should men start uh, taking preventive measures to detect prostate cancer? There, there is a myth out there or understanding that prostate cancer only affects older men, and that's really not true. We're seeing in the practice a lot of men in their young, 40s are coming to the practice with very, very aggressive prostate cancer. So the recommendation is to get the blood test, the PSA, which is prostate-specific antigen. PSA is the blood test that we use to detect prostate cancer at the age of 40. So you should get a baseline at the age of 40, and then every year after that, if there's a real family history or if you're at a risk, high-risk group, if there isn't, then after the age of 45, every year I would recommend to get that PSA. But the PSA is a blood test, so one test is not going to give you much of the information. And I always encourage men out there, number one, if you get a blood test, get a copy and keep it for yourself. Number two, after multiple of these tests, look at the trend. Is it really going up really fast or is it really moving very slow? And so it gives us a lot of information. Once you have three or four of these, we can see what the trend is, and that's really important. According to the recent data, what age are men starting to see prostate cancer? You know, it's variable. We see it more as we get older, the risk of prostate cancer increases. Family history is, is extremely important, and we see this among African Americans. So I can't tell you what age is really at, at risk, even though the older men have higher risk. But like I said, because of genetics, because of our diet, because of uh, risk factors that's out there, we're seeing men in their 40s and 50s with prostate cancer. So the message out there to a lot of men is to get tested, know your PSA, and make sure you follow that every year. That's extremely important. Well, guys, you know, listen to a doctor saying every year, PSA. It just takes one test. And it's a five-minute visit. It's a blood test and the exam for prostate cancer. And I know a lot of men may think this is like really uncomfortable. Yes, it's not, you know, but it gives us tremendous amount of information and we can save lives and that's important. So that's a big message out there. So we're going to tell the gentlemen out there that they should start taking this test approximately 38, 39, 40 years old. Absolutely. Annual test, just like ladies, we, we're, we're testing all year long. <laughs> you guys have to start taking care of yourselves. Well, the credit goes to women because you guys are great. You do all the screening, you go for the mammograms, and if, if you look at the prostate cancer, the natural history and the way it behaves, very much similar to breast cancer. The numbers are identical. 230,000 men die from, uh, are diagnosed with prostate cancer. We see 30,000 die from prostate cancer, very similar to breast. So the way you encourage women to go out there and get the mammogram is exactly what we need for men to go out and get their PSAs and the exam. Um, we all do know that, of course, cancer it also depends on the family history. But there are things that we can do in our life to lead a healthier lifestyle so we can prevent various diseases, one of which is cancer. Would you like to give us some advice on that? Well, you know, we're in the Greek station, and the Greek food, obviously, I think is one of the best food. I've talked about Mediterranean diet on Fox News. Almost every Sunday you hear me talk about that kind of food. We know that omega-3 fatty acid and salmon and healthy food is absolutely great for you. Certainly, lycopene, which you find in tomatoes and tomato sauce, lycopene is very, very critical, and zinc is important. I don't want people to take vitamin E, and I don't want them to take selenium. 
Many urologists recommend vitamin E, and now the new studies that's coming from Mayo Clinic shows that if you take a lot of vitamin E, that actually increases the risk of prostate cancer. So don't touch vitamin E uh, unless it's under supervision of your doctor, and that's really the big message. Exercise is extremely helpful with any kind of cancer, and stay away from fatty food. That's really the big thing. How do you there. feel about psychological support? What can someone do? Uh, you know, the family, it's very important that the family to support you, but what do you think one can do to mentally battle this disease? Well, the question is how much stress and what stress does to your body. And I, I think there are more and more studies comes that the effect of stress on your body increasing these uh, free radicals, and that's why taking a lot of antioxidants. I also love berries. I think blueberries and any kind of strawberries, any family of those berries, are great antioxidants. Chocolate is actually not bad for you. Coffee, I always encourage three to four cups of coffee. Now, people say that's a lot of coffee in a day. If you don't have any reflux, if you don't have any heart disease, three to four cups of coffee, we see that it reduces the risk of diabetes, reduces the risk of Alzheimer, and certainly many cancers, including prostate cancer, is quite helpful. Doctor, a lot of things have come out on the internet. People are very confused about a lot of the information that's out there. Uh, for one, let's just go back to the food real quick. You've mentioned a lot of wonderful all-natural food. Of course, we're going to talk organic here. We're hoping that you're all trying to eat organic uh, because organic is sure. very important and genetically modified food has caused a lot of, unfortunately, it's linked to a lot of diseases. Um, should we be taking vitamins or should we be trying to get the vitamins through the food? So I think if you have a balanced diet, and I always say that vitamins is for people who don't get their balanced diet. What does it mean? If you're really getting four portions of fruits and vegetables, if you're exercising all the time, if you get your two portions of salmon, enough omega-3 fatty acid, you don't need to a lot of these doctors on TV that will tell you, take chia seed, take more omega-3 fatty acid, and, and all these vitamins. The addition of all of those vitamins now can have a negative effect on you, and it can actually hurt you more than it can help. How many people out there really have the balanced diet? It depends on your lifestyle. There are some people that drink their seven glasses of water, they get their eight hours of sleep, they follow everything we tell them to do, that's fine. Those people, they don't need to take their vitamins. I work extremely hard, I have a very busy practice, I may get six hours of sleep, or I should be getting eight hours of sleep. For me, taking one multivitamin for men is great because if I don't get enough from my diet, that would supplement it. But to go and, and say everybody should be on tons of vitamins. I see some of my patients come in with like 50 pills a day. I don't know if that's really the way to go. So I'm glad you brought it up because there's a lot of misinformation online. And, and Google. And where should people, I mean, what is your advice to, to avid readers that are interested in this topic? Where can they log on to some very uh, credible information? Well, certainly, you know, um, there are a lot of academic institutions and the most prestigious one, I work at Lenox Hill Hospital, there's a lot of information on nutrition. My own Facebook, we're constantly updating it with a lot of tremendous amount of good nutrition, exercise and diet. In the field of prostate cancer, almost in a weekly basis, you can find information on my own Facebook so they can go there and get a lot of information. The other thing is, you know, when you talk about, for example, prostate cancer, um, people think that prostate cancer is like a deadly disease. But when you find it at the early stage, the cure rate is extremely high with tremendous quality of life. People are worried about sexual function. People are worried about continence. We've come a long way with all these advanced robotic technology, and we can help a lot of men out there. Prevention, prevention, prevention. And um, you do a special surgery, and we're going to talk about our dearest Peter uh, because you were his doctor, and you saved him for another five to six years. Uh, I'd like to know, what is robotic uh, prostatectomy? So robotic surgery, it involves, it's a remote control operation, removing the entire prostate, saving the nerves that are responsible for sexual function. So when I operate on patients, they can have excellent quality of life. They don't have to have any urine leak. They can have good quality of life with their spouse, etc. But you're removing the, the prostate because it has cancer in it. Traditionally, we used to make a big incision, use our hands, and we use our tactile feedback or touch to remove the prostate. I don't believe in that anymore because it causes a lot of trauma around the prostate. 
So if you have that experience as an oncologist, which is what I did uh, at Sloan Kettering, we brought in the laparoscopic or minimal invasive procedures, no more cutting, few keyhole openings, and we are able to remove the prostate without any blood loss. If there's no blood in the field and you can see well, you don't need to touch anymore. Now, robotic surgery is exactly the way it is. So I sit here, the patient is about 10 feet away, and I'm able to use our lens, better magnification, better camera, better, exactly like the lights that we have over here. So it allows me to be doing the same old-fashioned surgery, but much more accurate, very delicate, and the technique that I developed, the SMART technique, is even now a modified version where instead of removing the nerves from the prostate, I move the prostate from the nerves. So the sexual function is there. That's tremendous. That's tremendous. You can't have a 40-year-old man to become impotent. Absolutely not. So we are able to save their sex life. We are able to save their continence and free of cancer. And that's tremendous. Now, how do they know that they have cancer? The, the cancer is gone. The PSA after surgery should be undetectable or zero. Mm -hmm. That's why I prefer, as a first line of treatment, removal of the prostate and use radiation only as a backup plan, Yana. Medicine That's and technology constantly evolving to help better people's lives. It's amazing. That's true. The other big message is that if you get radiation as a first line of treatment, it would be very difficult to do surgery after radiation. So I would caution a lot of people out there, if you're diagnosed with prostate cancer, try to find someone who's an expert in prostate cancer, remove it robotically. I certainly at Lenox Hill Hospital, I performed the entire operation. This surgery takes about an hour. They stay in a beautiful room afterwards, private, no infection. Uh, or every part of surgery is important. And then if the cancer comes back, which is about 5% or so, that I like to have a radiation as an option after surgery, and that's really critical. I mean, this is wonderful information, and it's, it's helping the viewers prevent. I'd like also to give a type of uh, list to our viewers of what does cause cancer, and then I'd like to know what we can do to prevent cancer. So I think that our diet certainly plays a big role. I think when you have a lot of fatty food and like you're not taking enough your fruits and vegetables that's supposed to free up all those free radicals, that can lead to cancer. And unfortunately, I've said it many times, our food chain system is contaminated. We see a lot of uh, you know, uh, fructose, corn syrup, just, just like a lot of fatty food Salt is in, embedded in our diet, processed. In, in processed meat. That we, so all of that really has affected us. Having said that, I think you can also have fantastic diet and do all the right things. But if genetically you're exposed to this, if your father, grandfather has prostate cancer, you're at high risk. And we want those groups to really get checked more often and know their PSA and go to a urologist <clears throat> and be able to find out what's going on. Some things are beyond our control. Predisposition is one of them. However, as Dr. Samadhi has said to us today, please watch your diet. Uh, try to cut out those processed foods, sugar, salt, exercise. We want you to exercise. Um, he's given you the bill of health right now. He's given you exactly <laughs> what you need to stay healthy and he's told you what you need to do to prevent any sort of oncoming disease. Doctor, you have a wonderful story to share with us. Um, we recently lost, it's been one year actually, uh, that we've lost uh, my business partner and friend, uh, Peter Latos, and it's because of you that he was able uh, to fight this horrible disease for so many more years. Well, as you're, as you're talking about Peter, it's almost like uh, there's chills going through my spine. Um, Peter Latos was not just my patient, but he became my good friend. And he was told at the time when I saw him, his PSA was 60, and a normal PSA should be less than four. And uh, he was told that he only has six months left. And I met him about exactly five years ago. And I said, Peter, if you're willing to go and fight the disease, I'm with you throughout this whole process. Um, he, we, we miss him. I'm sorry that he's not here, but I think the big message that he always had to a lot of men out there is that prostate cancer is a silent killer. There are no symptoms. You can have it now without knowing it. You need to get your PSA checked. If you're diagnosed with prostate cancer, it should not be a deadly disease. Come in and we can help you. And 
a lot of you already know me in the Greek community. I'm not just the doctor to just come in and do a procedure and go to the next one. I'm into it, I'm passionate, I want to help people. If I don't do another surgery for the rest of my life, I'm fine. It's not about my ego, but I think we can help a lot of men out there. And uh, that's a legacy that then, you know, Peter is leaving behind, and I want his message to get out there. And again, through this channel and many of other stations, we've been able to bring it out there. So We're increasing really awareness. You're increasing awareness. And God bless Peter Soul. He's in heaven. He did everything he could to increase awareness of prevention. He was a guy who always wanted to laugh. He loved life. He brought me to the Greek community. I really enjoyed spending time with him. We went into restaurants. He would walk in, and he was just like a magnet for, yeah. for just humor and love and everybody. He, he introduced the best chef and your, the Greek food and etc. So we all miss him. But I think, like, you know, and his, his family, I got to know every one of them, his brothers, his sons, and family. Um, so it, it, it's a great relationship. It's a great relationship with the Greek community, even though they tell me I look Greek. So You're an honorary <laughs> Greek doctor. It's finished. Thank you. So you, you have me, and you have my support and my team. And anything that the Greek community would want me to do, not just with prostate cancer, but I also help with many other cancers to put them in the right hand. Yana, you have my full support. Uh, we, we totally appreciate that. And uh, guess what? He's coming to you guys because he's opening up an office in Astoria. So all you Greeks can come visit Dr. Samadhi. Uh, let us know. These are great plans. What's going on with your office here? Well, you know, so many of them came to me. We have a great center in Manhattan. We're on Madison and 52nd. And you know how Greeks are. They're like my family. They're like, you have to open up this space in Astoria. It's difficult to come to the city. So within the next couple of months, we're going to have a beautiful center right here in Astoria for you to make it easier to come for a checkup. And I think this is going to be a huge opportunity for a lot of men who not just are worried about prostate cancer, enlarged prostate. If you're getting up every night multiple times, if you don't empty your bladder, if you feel, if you see blood in the urine, kidney stones, if you suffer from sexual function, now we have so many medications out there that we can help you so we can really change quality of life and make sure that you get your sleep and you can perform and your screening and checkups, all of that is going to be right here in Astoria. We will have our phone number. We'll announce it, and I'm sure you're going to let everyone know. Doctor, thank you so much again. All your valuable information has been uh, a blessing to all of our viewers. Thank you. And just to close off, we'd like to know some symptoms and signs that our viewers can be aware of. So this is a, the, probably the most important question of the whole segment. If you look at many other cancers, whether it's colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, they all have their own signs and symptoms. With prostate cancer, there are really no signs. It's, that's why they call it a silent killer. So you could be one out of six men are walking out there with prostate cancer without knowing. Some of the vague symptoms, if you're getting up in the middle of the night multiple times, if you're not emptying the bladder, if you see blood in the urine or blood in the ejaculate, all of those are some of the very vague signs and symptoms of prostate cancer. You need to come in, you need to get your PSA checked. And again, through a lot of advanced technology that we have, we can get you through get you to be cancer-free and move on. Doctor, thank you so much. Gentlemen, you Pleasure. heard it. Exercise, prevention, eat well, PSA every year, and, of course, positive thoughts. Absolutely. All of this will hopefully prevent this horrible, horrible disease that we're all fighting so hard to get rid of. Um, Dr. Samadhi, where can someone reach you? Tell us your Facebook, all your information. Our phone number is very easy to remember. It's 212 Three six five five thousand, and if you go on Facebook online under Dr. David Samadi, there's tremendous amount of information that I hope you benefit from. Doctor, thank you again so much. We're going to have you, you back it's on. A so pleasure. look out for Dr. Samadi, guys. He's going to be right back on here. We're going to bring him on as much as we can. You can also see him on the major networks. He's a correspondent for many uh, shows and news for uh, under the, the health and medical segment. Thank you, and, and it's a pleasure to be here with you. And I hope we're going to continue to help many men out there. 